yesterday morning, I saw one of the lawyers uh, for one of the Duke, uh, the, 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 no, I was going to say the, the, the Duke rapists because they didn't do it, but um, <laughs> one of the Duke students accused of rape um, at age 64, was in good health, nobody knew anything was the problem, died suddenly of a massive heart attack. That's one of these little ticking time bombs that went off. And when I see that, it's extremely frustrating uh, because it's completely preventable. And what people are treating more than the little ticking time bombs are bigger plaques that I'll explain in a few minutes with angioplasty, with bypass surgery. And they're treating on the basis of an old model of disease I call the plumbing model. And it turns out that these plaques that they're going after are not the ones that killed this lawyer or anybody else. They're actually healed plaques. They may block the vessels 60, 70, 80 percent, but they're not killing anybody. And we've been spending billions and billions of dollars going after these lesions, bypassing them, squashing them. And there was actually never any proof that bypassing or squashing these lesions prevented heart attacks or strokes. And that's, frankly, the point of, of the, my, my new book, the South Beach Heart Program. Um, it's, it's really a wake-up call and it's meant to be whistleblowing uh, because there's, there's really been a battle in medicine going on between what I call the plumbers and the healers, and it's been largely going on under the radar, which is why many of you may not have heard about it. Now, things pop up in the paper in the New York Times uh, earlier this year. There was a big article about this group in Ohio that uh, you know does just thousands and thousands and thousands of angioplasties in a relatively small hospital, and seemed like excess. They they said, well, we're we're dealing with disease early. Uh, so it's been popping up, but it's not changed medical practice, which is something, to this point, which is something we can talk about. But today, this was a major, major trial showing exactly this point, that opening up these chronic blocked arteries does nothing to prevent a heart attack. And let me explain uh, why, you know, how, 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 this, how this evolved. Um, when I went to medical school here at NYU in the 1970s and did my cardiology training, we were taught the plumber's view of heart disease, that the arteries that supply the heart muscle with blood, the coronary arteries, were like pipes and we knew if they got blocked and the heart muscle didn't get the blood, the heart muscle died, and that was a heart attack. The question was, what caused them to get blocked? And what we were taught was it was sludge, which called arteriosclerosis, and just like the pipe draining your sink, it would, the sludge would build up gradually. And when the sludge got to be about 70% blocking the artery, then you couldn't, if you exercised, you couldn't increase blood flow to the heart muscle. So when you exercise, say walk 20 blocks in New York, you'd feel some chest pain. And we were taught that once somebody had chest pain, or even if they didn't have pain, but you put them on a treadmill and they walked 20, they walked on the treadmill um, for eight minutes on a boost protocol, and they get a little chest pain. It meant they have a 70% lesion, and you better do something about it, because that sludge would continue to gradually close the artery, and if it closed it off, would block the blood flow completely, the heart muscle would die, and you have a heart attack. And if enough muscle dies, you die. Um, well, the obvious thing to prevent that 70% blockage from becoming 80, 90, 100% was rotor You know, you put a stent in and you squash the plaque and open it up and relieve the chest pain. 
or you bypass it. And that's what we've been spending billions of dollars a year on. Now, you know, in, in Canada, they don't do all these procedures. And they're not, they've never died at any faster rates of, of heart disease. They actually die at a slower rate. Um, I'm not, I'm not for the Canadian healthcare system, but, and the reason they don't do it is, is economic, but the fact is, uh, without doing all these procedures, nobody's dying faster of heart attacks. Well, it turns out that this plumbing view of heart disease, the way vessels gradually glow, uh, block with sludge, is turned out to be totally wrong. Beginning in the 1980s, but particularly in the 1990s, researchers started to poke holes in the theory. And we should have anticipated, because number one, studies were not showing that these procedures prevent, prevented heart attacks. And if we were opening up or bypassing a 70% or 80% lesion that was become 90 and 100% obstructive and then cause a heart attack, if we were opening those, those up, they, it should have prevented heart attacks. But the studies showed that they didn't. But the other thing that bothered me in practice was I didn't see people presenting the way they were supposed to. I didn't see patients who had, uh, who had chest pain walking 20 blocks, and a few months later it would be 15 blocks, then 10 blocks, then 5 blocks. And this is when we didn't have medications to stop the progression. We would never see this gradual progressive angina and warnings before heart attacks. We saw cases like this, uh, uh, this, this uh, lawyer from Raleigh who was fine one day, fine one minute, yeah. the next minute, yeah. boom, suddenly. Mm -hmm. Well, the way we know what happens today is what I like to call the healer's view of heart disease. It turns out the arthrosclerosis does not build up just like gradually like diffuse sludge. It builds up like little pimple 